Hello, hello, my adorable squidlings. It is Katie here, and today we're unboxing the September 2020 Art Snacks Plus box. Also, for the month of September, if you become a patron from the Vampire Squid tier and up, you will get one of my new washi tapes. Expect that for the month of September. If, I hope you're excited about that. Um, these will be up in my shop sometime between mid to end uh, September. I'm going to be doing a huge shop update, so keep an eye on that. It's closed right now, so you can't order, but keep an eye on that. And I may or may not have a discount code. If you're a patron, you'll get a little bit bigger of a discount than everybody else. So if you're interested in becoming a patron to get one of these sweet washi tapes for the month of September or just to get that really cool discount code that's coming up soon, uh, head on over there and check it out. I see something I'm really excited about. Okie doke. Well, the first thing here is really large and I'm gonna have trouble getting that out. How can they even get this in here? So, before we go any further, if you don't know, the Art Snacks Plus box has a surface in it every month plus some extra goodies. The first surface, the only surface I think, is a pack of Canton L'Aquarelle. Oh, that was terrible. I'm so sorry for anybody French that watches this. Oh my god. Uh, it's L'Aquarelle Canton Heritage. Excuse my terrible, terrible accent. Uh, it's a beautiful word, beautiful language, but not one my throat wants to work with. So, this is a watercolor block and it is in hot press paper, 140 pounds, 300 GSM, and it is 9.1 by 12.2 inches. It's, it's hefty and I'm so excited because this is such nice paper. Oh, this is like holy grail paper and I'm really excited. All right, the next plus item after I get these cards out, of course. <laughs> oh, I just got a glimpse of what it is. Okay, so this is the plus item. These must be new or something. So these are the Uni Emote or Emot pins and of course we've got a set of them and in my sketch box, I don't know if you've seen the sketch box yet, I don't think you have, but I've already unboxed it. And spoiler alert, there are a couple of these and they talked about this stand and I was like, oh, I don't have the stand, but now I do. So anyway, um, these are actually really cool pins. I'm not going to get them out quite yet, but they these are the colors and they're pretty true to the color on the band. They're fine tips, so they're 0.4. Um, and yeah, I'll get them out in a minute when I swatch them. But anyway, there's that. Then we have our candy. What is this? It's a jawbreaker. I love jaw, or sorry, jaw buster. I love jaw breakers, jaw busters, whatever. And then everything else in the box that I'm going to get out of the way here is what comes in the regular art snacks box. Eep. Okay. So the first item is, oh, I always love their stickers. They're so fun. So this is their sticker of the month. Super cute. Then we're just gonna, oh, I'm, I'm excited. This, this month is already great. Um, this is a Uni Posca pin. It is in green, but this one's special. And I will show you why it's special as soon as I open it. Because I already uncapped it, but it is a brush tip. Which I find to be super heckin' cool. And I don't actually have a green brush tip one. I have a black one and I think I have a white one and I, and I think I have a blue one. But I don't have the green one. So I'm very excited. I'm gonna get this one started a little bit later, but this is really cool. Then we have got a polychromos colored pencil. This one is in light phthalo blue. It is number 145 and it is so pretty. I actually have a set of polychromos. I don't actually know if I have this color or not, but it's really, 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 really pretty. Then we have a Micron Pigma 03 in black. This is just kind of like a standard fine tip fine liner. I have a few 03s and I'm always happy to have another one. And then lastly is something they actually advertised and I'm pretty excited about, and I have it in Ultramarine. I don't even know what this is yet though. What is, I'm gonna have to refer to the card because again, this is all in a language I don't speak. This is the Kuretake Zig 
Cambio, Cambio, Tambien, Cambien, one of those words. Brush pen. This is really cool. So it's just a colored brush pen. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to do some disassembly to get it started. What is kind of funky? Do you take this part off? Hold on, it has instructions. Okay, so remove the yellow cap. Oh, look at that color. Remove the yellow ring. And then you just pop this puppy back. And then it's just it's just done. It just, it's, I don't have to squeeze it. It's not squeezable. Do I just wait now? So yep, yeah, I just wait now. But anyway, while I wait, yeah, that's it. That's that's the box and. Honestly, this is this is fun. Like art snacks, you guys are stepping up your game. And I'm really excited about a lot of these items. <clears throat> so like some of the items I feel are kind of meh, but some of the other items I feel like are kind of cool. Like I'm so excited about this Canson paper and I'm so excited about whatever this cool looking pin is. Oh, it's already flowing in there. Kind of. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it's already kind of flowing in there. Oh, I'm excited. Okay. Yeah, I'm just, I'm overall excited. This is going to be a fun box. I don't know how it's going to tie into watercolors, except for maybe this and this. But I don't know. We'll see. Um, but anyway, let's swatch them out as per usual, and then we'll go from there. Alright, let's get to swatching these as per usual. I'm going to grab the sticker. Go ahead and put it in my sketchbook. This time I want to put it right here, just right dead center. I'm gonna use the micron to write the month. Alright, now let's go. So first off is the Pigma Micron. is the 03. It's very nice. One of my favorites. Then we've got the Faber-Castell Polychromos and this is in light phthalo blue. Yeah, light phthalo blue. Super nice. Then I'm gonna swatch out all of these emote, emote pins. I think it's really cool that they come in a stand. All right. I'm going to do the visually darkest one just so you can see it. expect them to have a lot more like drag so to speak like to be harder to write with they're super smooth so here is this color then we've got a lovely pink color a purpley color Ooh, that's a nice purple this like coral color then this like light blue color. These are actually really really nice colors. It's a nice, I don't know, it's just a nice mix. I like them. Then we have the Posca brush. Super nice. Okay. <laughs> I said super nice like at the end of all of them, but they are really nice. And this took forever to actually get the ink flowing. And actually, as you can tell, it's still not 100% there, but we're going with it. Uh, shoot, what is this called? This is a Kudatake one, so I'm just going to write that. It's a Cambio Tambian. I'm just going to put Cambio... Yeah, the color is really nice, and I think it is water soluble, which is always great. But yeah, again, the color is not even fully in this, and it's probably been at least an hour. 
Um, the more you use it, I think, the more it goes. It's a really pretty color, too. Yeah, so this is the September Art Snacks color selection that I got. It is a lot of blues. <laughs> uh, so I have no idea what I'm going to make with this, but we're going to make it work. Um, I have to do some thinking, of course. Um, but yeah, so let's go make an illustration. Alright, so I cut the sheet in half just because that's a lot of space to try to fill something up with. Um, and I am going to be using a palette with this marker. This paper, I did some testing of my own over on the side. Um, I kind of noticed that the blue marker actually likes to soak in a lot with this cotton paper. So I've decided that I want to use it mainly in a palette. Uh, and I may use the Posca that way too, but for the time being, this is the way I'm doing it. So the picture I just showed you was actually an idea, concept that I wanted to play around with. And I actually want to do some sketching in with this Polychromos pencil. Um, it's the closest thing to regular pencil I have, so that's what I'm going to be sketching with. And I'm going to be using a bit of a reference here because I don't really use a teapot, so don't. <laughs> I, I don't really know what one looks like uh, right offhand anyway, so we're just going to play around and reference as I go. But yeah, for the mushroom, tea, for the mushroom tea party theme on uh, Patreon this month, I I didn't want to just draw like a person. I also really liked this idea of an actual like tea party, so I wanted there to be like a little butterfly holding up the uh, tea kettle. Maybe two butterflies. I don't know yet. Uh, we'll do a second butterfly. Uh, and have them like pouring some tea into a cute little teacup that's seated up on some mushrooms. But yeah, I really like the idea and so that is what I'm drawing. Uh, I want this teacup to be a little bit like on a plate or something. Uh, don't want it to be like super crazy. Then I also want there to be like some little mushrooms maybe chilling in the tea. Because this is, after all, a mushroom tea party! <laughs> so, we'll, we'll kind of go from there. And I think I might put a little design over on this teacup a little later. Uh, and then, for the setting here... In my initial drawing, I had multiple mushrooms holding this up, but I think one mushroom does the job. Can I erase this? Hey, it erases pretty okay. Alright, and then I'm just going to curve it off right here. And then I'm just going to make the stalk just kind of go off the camera. Or the camera. <laughs> I go off the picture. But, um, yeah, this is our little teacup. And it's actually pretty simple. I think I'm going to add a few more butterflies just to kind of set the scene because I don't want there to just be a couple of butterflies and then that's it. But yeah, so that's that's the plan. Um, thank you for sketching with me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, so let's... Um, Let's add some color. Before I add some color though, don't forget if you sketch anything along with me, use the hashtag squidoodling with Katie over on Instagram so I can see what you're doodling. If you want to share it with me, I would absolutely love, 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 love to see it. Okay, so certain parts of this I think I'm going to outline, but other parts I think I might outline last. So for the butterflies, what I have in mind for them, I think I'm going to go ahead and outline them.
I just got really quiet. Usually when I do line art, it's like super nerve wracking process. <laughs> so I typically get kind of quiet for line art. I apologize. Okie doke, and then there's one down here. Drew that wing kind of weird. That's okay. Just gives personality. And then the last one. Yeah, I think I only want a few butterflies on here. I don't want it to be like crazy with them, but I really like how I spread them out. They're super cute. Okay. I also forgot to split this wing off from the bottom wing, so I need to do that. All right, um, another thing I think I want to go ahead and outline is this this mushroom down here, the one that the teacup is sitting on. And then I think I'm gonna leave that because we also have these uni emote pencils and or pencils pins so I want to also use those around here I am going to be using them for the butterflies um, the one thing I'm gonna do for the butterflies though before I go any further is I'm gonna use this black to my advantage and I'm just going to darken in their cute little bodies uh, and I'm also gonna outline the wings um, it makes it a little easier for me to start sectioning them off if I go ahead and outline the wings. So that's what I'm doing. I'm not very good at sectioning them off, so I will probably have to grab a reference. Because every time I do, for some reason, it's like, if I don't grab a reference, it looks really strange. <laughs> So, uh, and I'd rather not make it look really strange. So I'm just going to grab a reference as soon as I'm done with this. I also really like adding black to the tips of butterfly wings because I think it just makes them pop a lot more. I think it's cuter, I guess. Um, one thing that's not in the box that I'm probably gonna add, as you know, is a white gel pen, especially because some of these I wanna add little cute dots to. I think that would be really fun. I really like this paper. The one thing I have a problem with so far, um, I've been trying to transition to, um, yeah, like cotton paper, and I'm having a hard time because cotton paper, in my experience, tends to soak up a lot more uh, paint and doesn't let it move around as much. And I don't know if that's like a feature or something, but I don't really like that. The one thing I like about cellulose paper is that it's a lot easier to move pigment once you've um, once you've put it down. Like for instance, when I put it down on this paper, so the Canson XL paper, I'm gonna give you a demo. So like, I'm just gonna immediately do that and then literally immediately grab a super wet brush. And you see that, like, that hard edge? So that's the Canson, not Canson, is it Canson? Yeah, it's Canson. Anyway, that's the Canson paper, the fancy paper. And then this is the B paper that I typically use. It's my B mixed media, and I do believe this is a cellulose paper. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the same time frame. And it, like, it still has the hard edge, but I feel like, I got a hair. <laughs> I feel like there's less of a hard edge. Um, I don't know. Also, I think this this particular marker is just very abrasive, but I don't know. I like cellulose paper a lot more for that reason. So, eh. Anyway, let's let's get back to the art piece. Uh, I think I'm gonna leave this one with no black on the outlines, and then I'm gonna outline this one. Actually, I think that one up there. I'm going to instead of outlining it like I am these other butterflies. I think I'm just going to add some large black dots, because I think that would be cute. And I kind of wish I had thought of it for the other ones. There we go. Oh, that's cute. Okay. You know what, though? I could do it here, and I could do it here, and maybe I'll do it to this one up here. 
All right, now we have all different types of butterflies. I'm gonna grab a reference so I can accurately look at some butterflies and kind of figure out how to make these marks. See, like, every time I do butterfly wings, I'm always like, why am I having such a hard time? It's not even that hard to make these marks. But then if I'm not looking at a reference, I kind of just, like, forget. And then it ends up looking weird, so. Better to be safe than to be sorry. Alright, now that I have the basic ones up here, I think I'm just gonna pretty much copy what I did. I'm trying to preserve these dots as well, so I don't really want to like cross through them. And this one, I'm not sure what I want to do for this one yet. I think I might just color it in and not have any like butterfly wing lines. So the next thing I want to do is the main big colors I have are blue and green. And I don't really want to overpower the piece with these blues and greens because that's definitely possible. Um, in my little mock-up that I did, I didn't care too much for the color scheme. Um, so I wanna use these emote pins to kind of fill in some areas, and I also wanna use it to block out other areas. Um, for the butterflies, I actually wanna use the emote pins to color them in. Um, and I wanna do a bit of a gradient on that. So I'm just going to start with this red color here. Oh, these pins pick up the black. That's not good. Okay. I'm going to change my coloring style. I think I'm going to bring this red a little bit more down here. I also want to be careful not to do too much because doing too much means I'm going to pill up this paper because watercolor paper is nice, and it's strong and sturdy and all that good stuff, but too much fine tip marker work and you're gonna be seeing that paper come flying back at ya. Um, and then the last color I wanna throw in here is this lovely purple. I'm at the point where I kinda of just wanna leave these lines like really sketchy. I feel like all my art anymore like I get to a point where I'm just like but leave them sketchy it's fine it's like the devil on my shoulder um so yeah so I'm going to speed this up because this process is gonna take a little while I'm gonna put some music behind it and then we'll come back and do some more uh but not on the butterflies because I'm speeding that up <laughs> So I think I've decided that for the teacup and the teapot, I want them to match because I feel like they should be from like a little set. However, I don't really want them to be like solid blue. So I think I'm going to wet this entire thing with water or at least the main body of it for the time being. Um, and then I'm going to take some of this paint that I've scribbled out into the palette and just let it fade over here and just let it do its little thing to its heart's content. Guess I didn't get that bottom part. Um, and just let it, let it fade. Um, and then I'm gonna do the same thing for the tea cup. So I'm just gonna put some water down and then just let it fade out. I think for this one though, I'm going to dry off my brush and kind of help it because it didn't seem like it wanted to move at all. <laughs> I'm 
but helping it along if like I want it to go anywhere else <laughs> um, because I might need it to pull a little further or push it back a little bit because um, like here at the bottom I really want more blue so I'm gonna add and take away kind of as I see fit all right now I'm gonna leave it alone um, I you know I think for the mushroom I just want this mushroom to be green so I'm just going to go in with this Posca and I'm just going to color this in And I may come back and put some white dots on it or something just to give it a little bit more visual interest, but for the time being, just gonna add the Posca. This is gonna take a while because my Posca feels really dry for some reason. took way more time than I wanted it to, but that's okay. Uh, so we've got our green mushroom and our teapot and teacup are still kind of drying. I want this to feel very like whimsical. And so, and so that's really why I'm kind of happy we got the funky colors. Uh, for this teapot handle, I'm just going in with the straight color, and I'm not even using the brush for it because I don't want it to be that dark. The brush is definitely a lot darker than uh, what I've diluted down here. I may go in for like brief details with it, but for the time being, uh, I just want those lighter colors. Uh, and then to make it match, uh, I'm going to make the teapot handle, or teacup handle rather, uh, also a darker color. Gonna dilute this a bit and then just add some color to the plate as well. Um, and then let's make some funky mushrooms. It's my favorite thing to say, I swear. Um, I, I want them to be like a mix of colors, so I'm just going to do the same thing I did with the butterflies and I'm just coloring them in. I haven't decided what color I want to make the tea yet. <laughs> uh, I feel like that's kind of like the last thing that's really on my mind right now. Um, I'm also gonna just make the stalks of this just black and keep them white. Um, I feel like that's easier because I don't really have a color that I can make tan with. Uh, and then I'm going to outline the teacup. Just that part so I can go ahead and get the mushrooms kind of out there. Also realizing I missed a part on this mushroom over here. There we go. Uh, and then I'm also going to outline the back of the teacup. And I'm gonna go in with this and make it darker. I'm going to do the same thing I did to the body of the teapot uh, on the little spout. Although I'm going to try to feather it out a little more, make it a little darker than the rest of it. There is that. Uh, and you know what? I think for the stalk down here, I'm just going to add some hatching. I like that. I think it looks good. Um, is this dry? I wonder, can I go over this? Just like make some fun designs. 
I think I'm just going to leave them maybe as outlines. I may do a pattern, but I feel like coloring them in would take so long. So I am certainly not going to do that. Ooh, cross hatching. Yes. Gives the illusion that I colored it in without any of the headache. I'm still trying to decide the tea color, and I'm honestly just thinking about going in with this black micron. Because it's like, I could totally pass it off as black tea. But on the other side, it's like, this is like already a whimsical illustration. Like, why not make it a fun color like pink? <gasps> pink would be so pretty! I think we might do pink tea. I think we might do pink tea. I'm also really excited for this to be a print. Uh, I think this is gonna be so, so pretty as a print. Okay, now that that is done and over with, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and outline this plate and cup since I'm sure it's dry by now. Famous last words. Uh, just going ahead and getting those out of the way. And then we're just gonna make some pink tea. Pink tea. I wonder if pink tea is actually a thing. I feel like it is somewhere out there over the rainbow. I'm terrified to use this because it's so dark. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna leave it be. I don't, I don't wanna mess up what I already have. So I'm just going to leave it be and we're just gonna outline this cute teapot. I'm also gonna give like a little ghost line to where the tea would be coming out of. Because it's, it's transparent. We're just gonna say it's transparent. And I totally drew a line over where the handle's supposed to be. That's okay. We'll just pretend like I didn't, and it's maybe it just turned a little bit. Um, and I don't know what design I want to do, to be honest. Um, in the spirit of mushrooms, why don't we just draw some cute mushrooms? And then up at the top here, it's just gonna do like a little couple of wavy lines. And maybe some little dots. I don't know. I. Should not be a teacup designer. <laughs> but that's okay, that's definitely not my goal in life. Um, let's draw some more little mushrooms down here. Probably should have foregone the dots, but I already committed to uh, the teacup, so I'm just gonna put them. That wouldn't be so bad if they were also on the top. At least that's what my brain tells me. So we're just gonna do that. There we go. Cute little teapot. Um, and to bring this green back in here, I don't know, I feel like I should do something to bring the green back. But I also just don't want to overwork the piece because I do really like how whimsical it is. You know what? Looking at it in the viewfinder, I need a little bit more darkness. A little bit more darkness. That's highly unfortunate. Well, when life gives you lemons. You know, if it hadn't landed on the teapot, that wouldn't have been such a bad thing, but alas. <laughs> I wonder. I think I'm gonna let this dry a little bit and then maybe I might add some more splatters on it. Oh, 
Maybe we'll just add like a little speckled design on it to make it make more sense. It's honestly not a terrible idea. Plus it kind of adds some more interest to the piece. Well, what do you know? Happy accident. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Okay. Well, now that we've had our fun, <laughs> I think it's time to put this away. You know, I again, I want to do something else with this Posca, but like... I really don't know what else because it just, it just works, like the way it is. I could just draw some mushrooms in the background, I think I'll do that. It's like some really light mushrooms. Just so this isn't the only green in the piece. I'm just kind of adding to this piece until I guess I feel like it's done. Um, I'm having a hard time making it feel finished. Because like every time I kind of take a look at it after doing some lines or something, I'm like, oh, but I could use a little bit more of whatever. And so I add a little bit more of whatever, and now I feel like it's gone too far. Oh well. But I think I'm going to stop myself after these mushrooms for sure, just because the piece is great and all, but I think it's just, it's just done. There's only so much you can add to a piece like this before you add too much. And yes, a background would have been lovely, but that would have required me to plan a background in advance, and I certainly did not. So, that's okay. I also want to add a little bit of cross hatching under these mushrooms just to be reminiscent of this big one. Um, but yeah, I want to go in with a little bit of white just because that's kind of like my thing. And just add some to some bits of this. I want to make these mushrooms kind of shiny, so I'm just going to go over little bits and bobs. Just kind of add some sketchy marks in here. And then I want to add a little bit of white to this tea right here. Because it is a liquid, so it should be a little white. Um, and I think I'm just going to kind of leave it. I like where it's at. We had a bit of a happy accident, but it added some fun texture, so I don't even care that much. Um, I lied. I am going to do one more thing. I'm going to darken up the back of this plate a little bit. Just a little bit, especially because I darkened up everything else. So, I'm going to go ahead and darken that up. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna call this piece done. I'm gonna sign it somewhere. Probably under this big mushroom. And then, there it is. Here is the piece. It's simple, it's whimsical, it's fun, it's a mushroom tea party. And yeah, I couldn't have asked for anything better. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested on getting a print of this or even a free washi tape, head on over to my Patreon to go check those things out. I do have links in the description as well as a little card on screen that popped up earlier. Um, I want to thank you all so incredibly much for watching this video. Uh, I hope that you had fun hanging out with me because I had fun hanging out with you. I hope you all are having a squidoodly awesome day and I hope that you are staying safe, happy, and healthy wherever you are. If you're not a part of our cute squid pod, hit the subscribe button down below and don't forget I also have social media that I'm actually posting to again. Uh, if you want to follow me there, they are in the description below. And until next time, my adorable squidlings, toodaloo!